Good morning, everyone. I guess we figured out the secret to guarantee the rain. You just gotta run the field cultivator. Cause look at that, we've already had a quarter inch and there's another heavy round coming in first thing. Here's our local weatherman. Our outside inside cat usually comes in concerned when there's any kind of precipitation or thunder. I was gonna bring the DB60 and the 8R370 over for their spring service first thing this morning. Cause we just got it back yesterday. And the rain is over delivering right now. We're up to a half inch. Pretty gnarly little thunderstorm going on. My four border collies are scared to death. Hunker down in the basement. I think that we're going to find something else to do until this rain subsides. Which, not complaining one bit. I worked all that ground hoping we got a rain. The only caveat to that is a strong enough rain might actually allow some of that hen bit and chickweed I worked up with the field cultivator to reroot. Oh well. As long as 80% of it dies, I think that's a victory. Wow, the rain is actually picking up. This is fantastic. You couldn't have written a better script for this. Field cultivate, big rain. It's like I can predict the future. First thing I'm gonna do this morning is go ahead and drop the oil out of all three of our small Honda engines. The most important one, in my opinion, is the tanker one. It does the most running throughout the season. The seed tenders had fresh oil last year. It's probably not a super big deal to run in a couple years without changing, but we got some crappy weather outside today. Might as well just do it. I also don't know where the oil's gonna come out. This is the drain plug. I don't even know what the drain plug is. Huh. I, how did I not see this one on this side? Is that even an oil plug? Yep. You can tell it's an oil plug because there's oil coming out now. I'm gonna go do the seed tenders real quick. Dad's bringing me some John Deere Turf Guard 10W30, I believe. Doesn't really take too long to change these. Probably ought to put them on the uh, trickle charger for the batteries. Obviously, I've already talked to you about the sparge tube on the tanker. That was our big upgrade going into this growing season. What I'm going to do next is actually probably a downgrade. I'm going to be replacing this three inch rubber wire reinforced tubing with this just hard plastic tubing from the pump all the way back. I'm getting rid of this contraption right here. The inline meter, I think it would work for the right application, but for me, by the time I watch that meter, as fast as this thing's pumping, it's probably a better bet for me to just keep an eye on the ball valve in the tank of the Hagee, or not the ball valve, the float in there, so I know how much liquid's in there. Just a much more efficient method. So I'm gonna scrap all of this. We did have an incident here where this hose actually sagged down one day and rubbed against the road. I taped it up. It's not been leaking, but what I think I'm gonna do is cut the hose here, scrap this three foot, maybe sell this meter if any of you are interested, message me, and then keep this extra stuff plumbed up and wrap it around the tanker. So if I have an opportunity logistically to just pull up behind the tanker on the road somewhere and fill, I have extra hose ready to do that because it's a lot easier than having to always be right beside the tanker. It's just less explanation to the driver. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Place this stuff, take all this off, and then we should be about ready to go other than putting the oil in the engine. All the engines we're changing the oil on are done. Plumbing's not done, but I'm gonna take the 8R370 over there first thing, or before lunchtime, and go ahead and drop the oil out of it. That way we kind of have some multitasking going on. I was looking at the oil plug. It's right over here. It's pretty big, isn't it? Inch and an eighth. It's pretty damn big. I'm sure you've got this size in here. If you turn the wheel, you can go in here and do it. You think that's easier? Well, you to move the wheel, yeah. It'd be a hell of a lot easier. Okay. Wow. What, loose? <laughs> I mean, probably not too much. This princess has gotten the works here today. We put almost 350 hours on her in the last year. We got her some new oil, new filters. 
and then after Chris and I verify there's no leaks, I'm actually going to run up to the house and hose out the radiator because it's got a lot of soybean dust from harvest. We got interrupted by one of Dad's interesting projects. He's returning the back wheel weights off of that 8R340 we took off, which I can't blame him. He said it's like two grand worth of weights right there. Might as well take them back. Now, whether or not they make it all the way to town, that's not something we're even going to question until we get that phone call. We also put the plates in the planter while we were working on servicing. So honestly, pretty close to ready to plant. Yeah, I'd say that was due for cleaning out. What do you two think? Agree or disagree? Like, thank goodness the storm's over. We're scared to death it's out there. Okay, that's done. After letting it dry for a few minutes and going to grab a sweatshirt because it cooled way off, heading back to the main farm with this thing. Okay, looks like the vacuums are working. Let's put her down and make sure the fan works as well. It's pretty hard to see from the cab, but there's a little gauge right there that shows the fan pressure. Right now it's under 10, so. Everything appears to be good so far. I'm gonna run and get my grease gun and grease up a lot of those folding components. That way we know she's nice and lubricated for this season. It's crazy how the temperature has dropped essentially 20 degrees since this morning. And I was acclimated to those nice 65 to 70 degree days. One can make the fair argument that this is probably the most important greasing of the season, the preliminary one, pretty much because you can't guarantee you that every single zerk will get greased again while we're in the speed effects. At least when you have a little time on your hands, you can kind of crawl around the machine and make sure you're getting everything. And some of these fold cylinder pins probably don't need greased every day, whereas other things, it's a little more important. One issue that we seem to deal with every year on our planters is debris in our seed. A lot of times it's in the soybeans, treatment chunks find their way through. It's not one specific company, it just happens in the treating process. And even last year on both our corn and soybeans, one of our conveyors was starting to degrade and throw pieces into the tanks. And anytime you start to get plugging in the lines, it just becomes a whole fiasco, regardless of whose fault it is. And a lot of times the only way to get it out because fishing it out is impossible when it's full is to dump the tanks and grab the piece but this year we're finally investing in something that should help alleviate that issue hopefully i'm not entirely sure i just finished installing the first set it's two individual pieces they just sit in here they are just a little bit smaller than the c tube so they should catch any debris they are fitting loosely in there, so they're not mounted per se. There's no bolts holding them down. They're just going to be held on by gravity. I don't think they'll have issues with road travel and bouncing. Even if they did, they should find their way back home to that same groove because there is a gradual incline there that should grab them. It wasn't quite as turnkey as I was thinking. I thought you just drop them down there and be done. You do have to adjust the seed level monitor. You have to raise it up which took a few trips in and out of the hopper on this side. And I'll show you how it goes on the other side. Yes, it is uh, nice and homely in here. A nice aroma of graph talcum powder greeting you. And then I'm gonna adjust the seat sensor and probably take a shower when we're done. So here's the two grates. I just dropped them in here real quick. Move them out of the way. Two wing nuts on. To be honest, the level of the seat sensor in here is kind of irrelevant. I don't base my seat decisions on when I'm running out of seed. It's based on the farm, it's based on the field. You really should have a good idea on your own of when you need seed, if you are up to speed on your calculations. Not gonna lie to you, I dropped these wing nuts into the bottom at least three times. There we go. You have to move the seed sensor up because it'll block this and you also have to kind of move the cable up and zip tie it in the middle where they won't fit together perfectly. 
I looked very proficient this time, but I've learned not to turn the camera on until after I've done at least the first one, because I had to get it out of the other hopper at least five times before I burnt 200 calories trying to get the wiring right on the outside and doing all that. This one I did in one trip, thankfully. Obviously there's some gaps here. I mean, it is possible that stuff could still make its way through, but if we can catch 99.5% of objects that are an issue, that's 99.5% of the time we don't have to deal with the headaches of getting stuff clogged up in the lines. So there you have it. These are the van wall grates. I got them at newagsupply.com. They're not exactly just drop in and go. They aren't super hard to install though, unless you don't like climbing into the tanks. There's also a little rod that you can put down from the top so you don't have to get in once they're in. You can pull them out or adjust them from outside without having to climb in. Although when you think about climbing back out, you almost consider just staying in here for the night because it's not the most exciting journey. If that fails, we've also learned that there's another option as a backup plan. It's having an extra one of these seed tubes with a Y on it to use as a jumper. We didn't even know that was possible until this DB60 came assembled like this. So one seed tube fed a row and then it jumped over to another row. And it's only right here. I don't know why exactly they did it on this side. I'm both ends of the planter maybe they just only have so much room for lines in the ccs tank but coming from the other planters that all had one line to each row unit we didn't even realize that was possible so now we both have one of these in our cab and if let's say row 27 isn't feeding we can unplug row 27 cap it with this yellow cap right here and then interject this y on 28 jump it over to 27 and then it can feed from the other tank or actually the other line it's all pressure based with the fan once it gets over the vent it stops pushing through so it'll fill 28 and then 27 and it shouldn't have any problem keeping up because i never had any issue with these two rows last year i wish that there was a psa or a disclaimer that that was even possible because we didn't even get this till the end of last season it would have been nice on some of those times we were trying to race the reins to be able to just jump from one unit to the other as opposed to dig out the row units or the actual seed delivery tube in the tank eventually we would just dump the tank after it got bad enough and get the piece out but this would be a nice little alternative in the meantime i'm about ready to be done for the day after all that climbing Okay folks, finished up with the planter over there, got everything tucked back away. I believe as of now the soybean planter, other than verifying shutoff settings, is ready to plant. Well, got to put seed in it too, and I got to transfer the operation center lines boundaries over, which I can do that from the push of a button. I was going to come back and work on the tanker, my pet project I've got going on, doing some plumbing that's really not that important. But then I thought, the weather's killed my motivation, it's almost 5 o'clock. My family's inside. I probably ought to start banking some of these late days for when we're actually farming, not thinking about farming. And of course, I've got a front row ticket to my beloved Fighting Illini as they play the ferocious Purdue basketball team tonight. The front row ticket is in my living room, but it all feels the same when you got a 75 inch TV, right? It's like being there. Okay, never mind. It's not even close to the same, but you get to watch the game from the convenience of your home. I'm gonna go inside, take it easy for the rest of the day. Probably gonna end the video here so it's not a million minutes long. As always, I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.